Look, I don't care. Like, here's the thing. I don't care if people use Mac. I have, but let's just like, look, there's other things that are be- that are just as good. Right. Like I run PC Steinberg Cubase. I okay. love it. It's yeah. a perfect setup for me. That's the industry standard in Europe. See, my thing, here, here's my problem with it. Yes, we're, we're tangent. I'm a right clicker. I'm an iBook flipper. Macs and PCs, no fight gets bigger. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene, the people that make it, including me and these guys. My guests today, they're a local metalcore band that's formed in 2008 to help you release your aggression in a positive way. Uh, They've shared the stage with bands from around the world. Their album, Embrace Brutality, is out August 27th. Uh, The release show will be at The Space with uh, former guests on the channel, Pariah Was One, future guests of the channel, Fatal Illusions, Silent Movie Cinema, and Shadow of the Moon. Um, please welcome to the channel. I'm very happy to have them here. Mastiff! Say hi, guys. Hi! How's it going? What's up, guys? You gotta say the band name like that, right? Yeah. Yes. Of course. Mastiff! Um, now then, you brought me a gift, didn't you? I did. Movie magic! Nice! Um, we'll just put this up here. There we go. I'll, uh, make music, not excuses. Get that, I'll put it up there. You can get that at room6.shop. So, you can get this. You have an online store, right? Yes. What is the online store? Mastiff.bandcamp.com. That's right. They do have an online store. Man. I forget yes, that. They sometimes. do. Cool. It's nice. Before we get into the interview proper, for anybody watching the video that doesn't know who Mastiff is, thank you very much. Um, tell them who you are and what you do in the band. Uh, my name's Steve. I do lead vocals and miscellaneous other things. <laughs> Our uh, lead guitar player, Jason Hughes, is not here with us today. I'm Nikki. I play the bass. Bring the thunder. <laughs> I'm James. A lot of people out there know who I am. I play drums. I'm Josh. I play guitar. Nice name, nice hat. Yes, sir. He, he's also wearing one of these. Mine weathered. Yes. No, that's cool. Got the sweat stains and everything. Yes, sir. Thanks. <laughs> so, like, first of all, how do I look? All right, cool. It's great. So, I want to start off with something that's probably going to be, could cause a comment storm. We'll see. What is your definition of metalcore? I don't know. It's just metal, uh, aggressive. I mean, it's it's whatever. You know, there's so many genres and there's so many subgenres. So it's like, it's like, well, we're uh, we're this and that and this and plugged it in. So if you just define it as metalcore, it just makes it simple. We don't sing a lot, but it's aggressive. So right on. What do you, what do you call it? I mean, I just call everything metal, but then everybody has a different idea of what I mean, metal is. Metal, the name, just metal. The definition has changed a lot since the '80s. Yeah. Yeah. So I, mean, I would just call it metal, but yeah. you know, are, is it 80s metal? Is it uh, new I mean, metal? Is it uh, black metal? Is it hair metal? Is it all types of metal? So when what? you say metal, I figure yeah. that it's just a pretty safe. Yeah. Um, I mean, Black Sabbath was considered metal yeah. at the time, you know, so they didn't even know what, it, what metal was. Uh, why the name? Why Mastiff with a B? Um, so when I started the band, mm-hmm. um, Original guitar player Chris Whitney and I we were talking about names for bands. I said, Let's call it Mastiff. And I said, okay. So I looked it up and wrote it down on paper. And the two F's on paper didn't look good. So I put a V at the end. So you say a Mastiff, but with a V. Oh, so it's Mastiff. Mastiff. It's from that uh, that, that one country. Yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, of course, there is a, at least one of the band called Mastiff, mm-hmm. as in the dog. So. Um, I wanted to talk briefly about your earliest musical influence. I'm always interested, especially when it's a heavier band, what is the earliest musical influence? And I hear all sorts of stuff. So whoever wants to start, what is that first musical influence that you're like, I want to do that, whether it was an artist or a song or a genre or, or you saw a particular show, so whoever. Oh, I'll take this one first then. Um, my earliest music, um, Let's say um, my 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 father, or my dad, he's a drummer, and his dad was musicians, so it just kind of fell into that. Right. So he's kind of like uh, one of my heroes, you know. And, you know, learning drums and stuff. You didn't have a chance. Yeah, I <laughs> right out the gate, boom! Me and my little brother, were, you know, you're gonna do this and you're gonna do that. So um, I got 
schooled very young at doing country, southern rock, and then from when I got in my teenage years, I found a Metallica tape mm-hmm. sitting around that my older brother had left, and I plugged it in and been hooked ever since. Metallica, the gateway drug. There you go. Yes. Next. Oh. Uh, <laughs> take Josh. My earliest would be like, when I was like four or five, Beach Boys, then Kiss, Motley Crue, Poison, and then... It's a bit of a dynamic change there, <laughs> Beach Boys to... Well, that's my parents, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, then like, from the neighborhood, like, stuff like NWA, stuff like that, mm-hmm. and then, um, when I was a teenager, first it was Old School Metallica, then it was Korn's first album, then it was Machine Head, Fear Factory, and I was done. Right. You were done. I was done. Yeah. And I'm stumped. <laughs> yeah. Listen to Master Puppets for probably a summer and ended up picking up guitar. Yeah. And my stepdad found out and was like, you like metal? You're playing guitar? What? <laughs> and oh, buddy. <laughs> yeah. He, well, he always had bands and still plays, has a uh, one-man death metal project. Right. So. But. Next. Mine would be um, probably Metallica and then so that's like a theme. <laughs> And uh, alternative, like Nirvana and Pearl Jam, Stone Temple Pilots, they all made me want to learn guitar and, right and all the music. It's, I think that's, that's an important uh, dynamic shift between Metallica and, say, and grunge. Because mm-hmm. the grunge introduces certain elements that you just don't find in metal, if we're going to use the umbrella term. Right. And, and, uh, and vice versa. So, cool. Um, sir? Yeah. Um... Growing up, I did a lot of musical theater, and so for me, like, I didn't really get into, like, aggressive music until I was, you know, a teenager, but I grew up on Andrew Lloyd Webber, Webber tunes and The Association and uh, Neil Diamond, because my, my parents didn't have any rock albums. I think the heaviest thing they had was Beach Boys, so, like, I love, yeah, I love, uh, I love music. See, this is what I was waiting for. Yeah, no, 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 it's, it's true, so, like, I mean, I, Phantom of the Opera and, and, uh, Starlight Express and Joe's Amazing Techno Color Coat. Those are things that I, you know, really loved growing up. And so we did a lot of performance theater and a lot of musical theater. And so then as I got older, I was like, well, let's do something different than, you know, at least my family, they were doing all one thing and I wanted to do something different. So then I started getting into the Static X, the Fear Factory, uh, Corn, and uh, Power Man 5000 and a bunch of, uh, you know, you know, late 90s bands. And so then as things went along, then I got into Emperor and Zyklon and uh, what, whatever else, you know, there's so many things I can't even remember some of the names of bands I listen to, so. Right on. Yeah. Cool. See, that's what I like is, I love hearing like, oh yeah, I started listening to this totally different thing, and then over the years, kind of morphed into this. And, and, because that stays with you a little bit, I feel, no matter what style of music you're writing. Um, before anything else, I have been remiss, I did not welcome you properly. Welcome to the channel. Please, clink, clink, clink. Ding, clink, 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 clunk. <laughs> and welcome to the channel yourself. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing down there. Besides interviews, also got reviews, live streams, all sorts of cool things, um, including, by the time this comes out, it will already have happened, but uh, August 6th, there's going to be a show that I'm putting on which is my way of saying thank you to former guests. I've been doing this over three years, um, coming up on 100 interviews, and a lot of those have had performances. Five acts from uh, season one, the first five acts, basically, uh, are going to be performing at Chiba Hut on Rainbow and Sahara. Full show, it's free to the public, and it, I'm going to be live streaming it. So if you're interested in watching that, please consider checking the live stream uh, here. In the meantime, Hang on, I think we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do a quick booze break. We're back. Now then. Miss Dahuba. Hey. Houston to Vegas? Yeah, Houston to Vegas. So, I mean, it's, it's for one thing, it's drier, right? Yeah. But what made you move from Texas to Nevada? What made me? Were you moved? <laughs> Um, well, there's usually a story when someone comes to Vegas. So, as a uh, teenager and a young man running mm-hmm. around Houston area and stuff, 
I grew up in the country and, you know, we got, we can get into some trouble. Right. So, um, my aunt and uncle took me on, brought me out here to Vegas. Ah. Yeah, the, they, they needed some help with some, you know, some things that they were, you know, doing out here. So I, I said, okay, cool. I was working at the airport at the time with my uncle. So, um, we got a pretty good job here at McCarran and, um, I was, was not supposed to stay here. I was going to go back after a little while. I had no means of staying here. I was just helping. Right. And, um, ran into a few buddies of mine, some friends. Uh oh. I'll give them a shout out. Uh, Nebula X, ah. um, one of my first bands that I played out here in Vegas. Oh, you were in Nebula X? Yes. I did not realize that. Yeah. So, uh, we good friends with Rick and Javier. Um, through then, we played shows, we toured all over, done all kinds of great stuff, and, and um, they kind of pulled me in, trapped me here. That's so that's nice. one of the reasons why I got here. And I just love that he's, he's getting in trouble, let's send him to Sin City. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all of my friends, they're like, hey, how are you doing, buddy? You're, you're, you're alive? You know, where are you staying at? Where are you then? We right? figured you were destitute, drunk in the gun. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, okay. you know, stuck out here. Um, <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, um, being a musician and stuff, cat entertainment capital, you know, nice. all that kind of stuff. Now, besides Nebula, you were also in Darkest Day. That's that is correct, right? So, I was wondering, that's that was still Vegas based, right? Uh, yes, it's Vegas. Uh, yeah, they're not still going, are they? Um, as of right now, no. Okay. Yeah. Um, there are, we're, I can say, honestly, they're off and on, you know? <laughs> Welcome to music, Shane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I was wondering how, what was the transition, or what was the path from Darkest Day to Mastiff? Because uh, who, who, who basically created Mastiff? Was it you? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Because um, I, 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 who's the new, who's the new person? You're the new boy, right on. <laughs> so, um, with, with Darkest Day, um, so I met Joe through family friend and some work acquaintances, and I was not playing at all. I was going through some rough times, and they kind of pulled me in, you know, and was like, hey, you know, let's play, let's do some shows. Off and on, they were like, oh, we have a drummer to fill, or oh, we don't have a drummer. So they knew everybody that knows, they're like, oh, you need a drummer, mm -hmm. let's call James. If you always want to be busy working, yeah. be a drummer with, a, with your own gear and transportation. Exactly, yes. everybody liked that. And so, a place to rehearse. Yep. yep, yes. So um, I, had, I started with them and um, it just went on and on and on. And we've done some amazing shows out all over the place, you know. And um, it just, they wanted to take a break. Every, life handled, you know, some of them had kids yeah. uh, and they just, you know. Yep. And, um, I went through a separation and all that kind of good stuff, and uh, I ran into this guy one day. I was like, "Hey, yeah, I know you. <laughs> You're a thing I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm known. Didn't know the name, but I knew the per the, what you know the shape. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's funny because I I mean there's there's a lot of history that James and I have. I used to be in a, a band called Better Off Dead here in the late '90s, early 2000s, mm -hmm. and so. His, he was in a band called Star Zen, and we played a lot of shows together, and so we actually knew each other. And so, I mean, long story, our drummer left, joined his band, he got kicked out. And if I would have had his phone number, I would have had him come join right. me sooner, but I didn't. So then fast forward, how long would you say, 15 years? 15 years. And so he answers an ad, because I put an ad around places that says, you know, Massive looking for metal drummer. And so he, tr he came over, tried out. At the time, it just wasn't going to line up our schedules. Uh, but we stayed in touch, and so then we were like, hey, what are, we, what are you doing? What do you want to do? And and so Mastiff, we had been going, and my original drummer, Lance, God rest his soul, he he uh, died, which was very sad. And so like I, I just stopped doing music. I was like, you know, I'm going to be done. And, and so then I was like, well, you know, it'd be nice to honor Lance and get this going again. And so when, when uh, James had reached out to me, I was like, hey, uh, I'm looking to do this project to kind of, you know, bring it back and honor Lance and, and move forward. And so that's kind of how it, how it all started. Right on. Um, real quick, one more question for you. Then we'll move on to the next mm -hmm. victim. So you two are actually Renfair fans, right? Yes. We go every year. Yeah. Well, we try to go every year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, any plans for Mastiff to play? Oh, <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I mean, yeah, I've seen some interesting acts. I, yeah, fair. there's been some good acts there. You know, it'd be fun and inter- interesting to do. Yeah. Um, if everybody else was on board, you know, as a group, we all discuss it amongst each other and be like, "Yeah, we want to do it, or we don't want to do it, or is this good?" Or yeah. Yeah. some of us get drunk enough and be, "Yeah, let's do it." Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> yeah, let's do this. Right on, uh, Nikki. Yes. Since since I brought you up, um, you saw koi fish at the Alamo. I saw what? You saw a koi fish at the Alamo? Koi fish. Yeah. What? Why does the Alamo have koi fish? I don't know. Tell me. You posted Tell a me. picture. That oh, the Alamo in Texas. Yes. As, <laughs> as opposed to the Alamo in Dayton, Florida. The, the, the playing studio downtown. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. Uh, yes, there's koi fish down there in the Alamo, and this it's like an old. Um, so this is not the Alamo of Davy Crockett fame. This is a place called the Alamo. No, that's the Davy Crockett Alamo. Yeah. <laughs> Why do they have Japanese koi fish there? I they just have like a it's I guess it's like a park area there. And I think yeah. it was an old like irrigation area, and they just fill it up, and there's koi fish swimming in there. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> what, let's get the most non-Texas fish in there. <laughs> right on. I, I was I would think too. You know, let's get some catfish in there or something. You know, and it was right a on. beautiful place. By the way, it was beautiful there. Yeah, it looked beautiful. I, I was just it was one of those pictures. I was like. <laughs> the, the Alamo. Okay, wait a minute. So yeah, yeah. the real Alamo. Right we got on. to go there. It was really neat. Did they bother? Like, is it kind of all fixed up and pretty, or does it just look like a, a ruin or what? No, no they do. They do it up really nice. They do they renovations have, every um, year. Museum and, pieces inside, yeah. and you can go and explore. And, right on. Yeah, I get your picture taken. <laughs> it's really neat. They got people walk around and explain to you the certain part of the buildings and right. what they're for and what they were used for, and actually. You know, the grounds are actually more bigger than what it, you know. That's all you ever see is the picture. Uh, yeah, all you see is just the film, but it yeah. actually is a lot bigger than Right on. Cool. <laughs> sorry to throw you that curve. I'm not sorry, but I, I was just <laughs> like, boy, fish at the Alamo. That was weird. <laughs> that was a few years I'm like, ago. Well, I thought, you know, there's the, the Alamo here, yeah. the Rehearsal yeah. Studio. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah at first I thought so too, but it said Texas. I like, so I've never like, seen no fish here. Well, and I was like, first of all, why would the recording studio have, you know, wood fish? But then I was like, Alamo, Texas, like, I gotta ask. I gotta ask. Well, yeah. I take my band members and stuff. We go on he tours and trips, too, mm-hmm. and yeah. I, you know, me being from Texas, I've been all over there and you know, traveling and stuff. And I'm like, every time a new band member or a band member comes, we're like, we gotta go here. We gotta go there. Yeah, go to Austin. Let's go to you know. Texas. I see Texas. Well, many many places uh, strike me as places where you'd be like, hey, I've never been here before. Cool. There's all sorts of cool stuff to go see. Whereas here, it's how much money do you have? Right. Because exactly, no. <laughs> we can go see lots of cool stuff on the strip. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or we can go see them all. You know? <laughs> we, right. you know. Um, all right. One more question for you before I move on. Okay. And uh, this is kind of a more serious topic. Um, I know this was a bigger problem pre-COVID and pre-quarantine. And I was wondering, have you... Um, I'm talking about misogyny in the metal scene. Oh. And I'm wondering... Have, <laughs> put, yeah, like, ding, switching. <laughs> have you experienced any post quarantine, like, uh, have you seen anything in the scene where a lot of the old thinking is still there, or are people just now like, hey, it's just cool to play, and, and we're all hopefully more, slightly more enlightened? I, I think you're, we're more slightly more enlightened now. It, it's yeah. not... I, I would hope so. I, mean, uh, I know in the punk scene, it certainly uh, seems to have shifted a bit. There was a, a bit of a, you know, well, you know, you play pretty good for a girl, or, or whatever, because, you know, there are idiots out there and everything. They're still, yeah. They're still, so, yeah. <laughs> I was just curious. So, uh, still there, but sorry to shift, downshift the mood, <laughs> but I was just like, I don't often get, forgive me for this word, females, in the metal scene <laughs> on the show. Uh, and and uh, if I do, a lot of times, they're just, they're on the other side of the camera watching their oh, partner. Okay. And so I'm like, I'm going to ask. I never yeah. asked this, I'm going to ask. So, cool. I know quite a few uh, women metal players, though. But they, you know, they're in different states and stuff. But they still travel around in their metal bands. I do virtual interviews. Just saying. <laughs> right on. Uh, now I was next person's Jay Shoes. Who the heck's that guy? Oh, yeah, he's a lead guitar player. Yeah. I know. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, he's great. Man with the best name, Josh. Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, you have a degree from the University of Everyday. I'm hustling yes. of Southern Nevada. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What's you the course look like? Many years on the strip, man. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, by the way, happy birthday. Thank you. Coming up soon. And also, uh, your daughter's birthday is coming up, right? I guess it is. Cool. Happy birthday, then. I'm a July baby myself. Thank, thank you. Happy no birthday. Happy. Way to get older. <laughs> yes, sir. It's going to be 40. Way to, way to prove them wrong. <laughs> and it's your birthday. Happy birthday to you, too. Mm. Happy birthday, all <laughs> So, you said you're going to be 40? I'm going to be 40. Right on. I just turned 50. Oh. It hurts all the way down. It's all downhill now. It, it burns. <laughs> you're going down to form, and it's a whole other age <laughs> bracket range. 50. <laughs> it hurts. Um, so, you... You are a Mac heathen. Apparently, you, you're a Mac user. Yeah. Well, for my uh, yes, studio but phone. you have an Android phone, whereas yeah. everybody else is reverse. Yeah. Yes. And I, I'm an Android user and and a PC user because I used to fix people's cell phones over the phone, oh. and I will not buy an Apple product. Thank you very much. I oh. I bought all that. That's right. I said it. I bought that stuff because I was done playing music with other people, and then <laughs> yeah, and then I met these guys. Well, no, I, I, I know that... <laughs> then we stalked him for a couple months. Yeah, I know I that Mac yeah. is yeah. the industry standard for music and video. Shut your mouth. Let me rephrase it. I know that Mac was... Mac thinks that they're the industry standard. Mac users think, yes. I Don't don't get me wrong. Look, I don't care. Like, here's the thing. I don't care if people use Mac. I have... But it's just like, look, there's other things that are be- that are just as good. Right. Like, I run PC Steinberg Cubase. I okay. love it. It's yeah. a perfect setup for me. That's the industry standard in Europe. See, my thing, here, here's my problem with it. Yes, we're, we're tangent. My problem is, when you have to fix something, which would you rather fix? You can use iTunes and reset the damn thing, or you can, you know, fix it. Find the problem with the PC. And that's my thing. Same with Androids. Um, I, not to mention, of course, iPhones are always behind. Always. There, I said it. So, uh, thanks a lot. Great interview. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I use iPhone. Yeah, yeah I, I have Mac. Yeah, I know. I'm a Mac person. <laughs> yeah. If I would have known them when I went computer shopping, I would have got PC. Yeah. Um, it took like three months just to navigate the stupid system. If I didn't already have the history of having to fix people's iPhones for them over and over and over and having to be like, yes, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to remote into your computer, I'm going to have to use iTunes and reset your phone. Wow. Because iPhone. Uh, if I didn't already have that history, the second they said, here's our new phone, it's got a glass back, it's a thousand bucks, I, no, no, sorry, that's my thing. <laughs> so half the band hates me now. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, no, use, you have to figure out. But it's just like, look, use what you like. I, I don't like Apple. I liked Apple in the 90s. Right. Um, but uh, you know, people love Apple, and I finally come to a po- point where it's like, it's okay if people like Apple and use it, it's fine. You know, I, it's a free country, and... If you uh, if you like Apple, use it. If you don't like Apple, don't use it. If you like Mac or sorry, a PC, use it. If you don't like PC, don't use it. Just like be it's cool. Just preference of yeah. whoever yeah. doing what, what you know, do. what, and what they're capable of, what they want to do. Yep. Okay. I'm a right clicker. I'm an iBook flipper. Macs and PCs, no fight gets bigger. So Steve, yo, you're the head of manufacturing of Matera Music. That's right. Now, what is Matera Music? Materia Music oh. is a video game uh, record label out of Seattle, and they do uh, covers of uh, video games like Mega Man, Carry On, Zelda, Mario, uh, pretty much any video game. Mm-hmm. So um, they do they do like lo-fi, uh, dubstep, techno. I mean, it's it's, right it's actually pretty cool. Are you familiar with Decaying Tigers? No. They're a local band that does chip tune, and they play they play instruments that they have modded and they also literally make music with Game Boys. It's cool. And wow. they, yeah, it's awesome. They were in the channel, uh, they were in the, on the channel up in room six and managed to shoehorn just all their gear into that room, mm-hmm. which is now why my lighting is up on the wall instead of on stands. <laughs> Cause it literally was, my shooting alley was like the width of my, the body, the depth of my body. Wow. There you go. <laughs> wow. But yeah, they, they brought, they brought the gear and they brought the funk or they brought the fun. Uh, but yeah, Decaying Tigers, you should check them out if you get a chance. It's cool. fun. It's it's all instrumental stuff, but it, it somehow you're, you're like, I can totally picture someone playing a game to this, and then yeah, I can follow along with the story based on the title. So yeah. um, I know there's other chip tune artists in town too, but uh, that's who uh, I have the personal experience with. So cool. Decaying Tigers. Decaying Tigers, got it. Which is a whole other story behind that. That uh, yeah, it is a whole other genre. <laughs> um, 
So I wanted to, this is kind of more, mostly for you, based off of your social media posting. Mm -hmm. Kind of throw it out there. Castle or Wick? <laughs> um, why are you going to go there? <laughs> That's why I asked him. So for those of you that don't know, I'm asking, who would win? Frank Castle, the Punisher, or John Wick in yeah. any of his movies? I'm excited about number four. Uh, You know, I just I love John Wick, but I've been a fan of the Punisher longer, and I think the Punisher would would actually beat John Wick. I I feel like the Punisher is a sledgehammer, and John Wick is a scalpel, but a very robust scalpel. Mm -hmm. Like he certainly has no problem getting you know thrown around, and and but uh, yeah, I, I I feel like it's a Batman situation where with enough prep. Well, yeah, that's the th that's the thing. It's like who, who wins, Batman or Wolverine? Well, if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, Wolverine wins. If, if Batman's got time to prep, it's Batman. So it's just... Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, Batman's certainly taken out way tougher opponents than, than Wolverine. Mm -hmm. You know, he's taken out aliens. And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah Punisher's like one of my, my fa all-time favorite Marvel characters. But I absolutely love John, John Wick films. So it's just like, it, it's just violence and, and whatnot. And so it's just like... You know, Frank Castle and his backstory is right. is just you know a little bit more powerful to me, uh, and he just he just wants bad guys gone. Right. You know. So going down this rabbit hole a little bit, mm -hmm. do you prefer the? Um, I don't remember the actor's name, but the movie with the Punisher, uh, and you know the one I mean. Yeah. The the, the decent one. Yeah. <laughs> Or the series with uh, the Punisher. I, I like them both for different reasons. I, I mean, because the, well, the series one, he is not, he is a sledgehammer. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, whereas the other guy, there's a yeah. little bit more intellect yeah. there. Thomas Jane in the first. Thank you, in, Thomas in, Jane. In the, in, the, in, the, in the first Punisher, it's just like, uh, I really liked his performance. They weren't really true to the backstory in it, but it was still a, it was still a good movie, and I really, I mean, I loved it. Um, the, the series version, I mean, it was... It was just two seasons of Punisher, and I just couldn't get enough of it, you know? So Yeah, like, you know, you just YouTube uh, Punisher, and that's what comes up. And so many clips, you're just like, yes, I want to go work out. Yes, you know? <laughs> go on. Um, all right, cool. Last, cool. last question for you. Sure. And i, I kind of extrapolating off of what I found, mm -hmm. but you were a Mormon? Yes. Mormon to metal? Yes. I'm, I'm still Mormon. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah. I, I go to church every Sunday. Well then, congrats on not being, you know, bogged down by dogma. Yeah, thanks. It's, uh, you know, um, everybody has their own personal beliefs. Yeah. And um, if, if you want to talk more, you know, anybody who wants to talk to me about it, I'll have a conversation with them about it and, yeah. and, and, and my belief system and whatnot. But I, I didn't want it to be, um, I didn't want to be like, hey, this is a Mormon band, because it's not. We're just a metal band. No, no you're we, not. We play, we play music together, you know, and... Um, you know, I, I, it's just it's my personal right. beliefs, and uh, I don't I don't really use that to promote the band, but I'm not ashamed of it either. I served a, a two year mission. Uh -huh. I knocked on people's doors. Uh, if they were interested in hearing, I shared it with them. If they weren't, I left them be. You know, so. And and you want to talk about like developing just a thick skin and mental toughness? Try doing that. You know, or it, it's basically. Uh, I used to be a peddler. I, was, I used to go to not businesses, business stores, not not people's homes, mm -hmm. houses, but I used to go door to door. Saying, "Hey, I got this today." Blah blah blah. You know, mm -hmm. and um, that it, it it really develops your mental toughness, but also your stick to itness. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it translates well to to life. If you're going, if you're ever in a situation where you're like, "God, this sucks," or this just is, you know, the most. Why am I doing this? Stick it out. It, it, it you'll you'll thank yourself later. But always keep pushing towards something else. Thus ended the lesson. Sorry. Uh, so I wanted to talk about uh, more. This is more of a band question now. I want to talk your favorite show memory as Mastiff. And it could be favorite because oh, that was crazy. Somebody went to jail, or, or you know that that checked off a lot of my rock star checklist moments, or <laughs> or whatever. What is your favorite show memory? Hit it. Um, for for me, there's there's several. There there are definitely several. Um, most recently, I will say the first show back after the pandemic was was Josh's first show. He had been with us a year before we even played out. Uh, thanks, so, Corn. Thanks, COVID. And so, 
uh, we played this and we had a lot of people there and, and, and just people were there and it was so good to see everybody because it was like, well, we haven't seen anybody for, mm -hmm. for a while and um, it just, the, the energy was good and people were like, man, we yeah. needed this show, thanks, you yeah, know, exactly. and everybody just kept yeah, coming up to us and saying, thanks for throwing the show and it, it was just, it was really nice after not doing, mm -hmm. doing shows to, to then see everybody again and it was like we hadn't skipped a beat. So I remember like, that first month after quarantine. The shows, it didn't matter what you played. If you put on a show, guarantee pack house. Didn't matter who was on the bill. We're getting ready. We're getting yeah. Ready. And, and, uh, um, and I was I was there for a few of them, especially Triple B. It was like, it, I, I remember one, they had to, I wasn't there for this one, they had to open Fremont Country Club because there were just yeah. so many people. Yeah. And they're just like, screw it. I'll go in there. Uh, cool. Next. <laughs> go ahead. Um. great you know everybody always always good energy and stuff i do remember like i think it was like our going away show kind of like it was like last of the season we put it together at backstage and it was hilarious at the end there was guys in pink flamingo suits and they're like hey let me get your picture with you <laughs> i'm like oh my god you know? they're, they're, they're the most metal guys yeah. there <laughs> i'm like well that's something yeah i used to sing in an indie rock band and we kept getting booked between metal bands and punk bands and stuff and of course sea of black and safety pins in the audience you know the old uniform and i'd be walking around with some shirt like the cookie monster or you know some funny college dumb college rock shirt kind of thing and i'm like i'm the most metal guy here i wear whatever i want <laughs> and, and and i would get well i would get looks i would get looks and i'd be like excuse me and i'd go up on stage and rock but i, I always thought that uh, i want to meet those guys yeah they were pretty cool they That's were good awesome. guys they were they were fun they were like they were partying. The flaming O's. Yeah, they, I think they were just there to have a kick-ass time. That's, that's what it's all about. That's awesome. Have a kick-ass time, man. I'm going to say our out-of-town shows, we get to get out of Vegas and go to... Mm -hmm. you know, they treat it better. Stuff, and well, most of the time. They treat it better. Um, I would say the most memorable one is when our guitarists decide to have an epileptic seizure on stage and we have to, you know... Yeah, he, was, he was, I was going to ask him about that. That was the first time I ever had to stop the show and take care of something that needed to be done. Did you think, oh my god, he got electrocuted or what? Uh, you know what, I <laughs> yeah. thought he shit his pants at first. But yeah. then, I wouldn't you know, have put him over my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. We, didn't, yeah, we, didn't, we didn't know because you know, you're in that situation and right. um, you know, I'm just trying to keep keep the show going and then, and then he's like, man, I can't move. So Josh swoops in, grabs him, gets him off stage and we're like, alright, let's go to the hospital. He's like, no, just let me let me calm down a little bit. So. Was it no die attitude? He, he still wanted to, yeah, to get yeah. in it. You know? no, it, was, it was definitely epileptic. Well, we it was a non, was a non epileptic seizures. So it wasn't the triggered said. by like stage lights or something. No, it was, no. It was some, something yeah. else. There, he's he's getting medical done to figure out what what's going on. He's still, it's an ongoing thing. Right, right on. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask about it, but he's not here. So. Yeah. Hope you're doing okay, buddy. Next, uh, my first show. Well, I, I mean, mean, yeah, you never forget your first, right? Well, I joined and we got show ready. Like within, I think, six weeks, and that got canceled, and another thing got canceled. <laughs> then it just COVID. became like... Thanks, COVID. Yeah. yeah. Then it just became like, eventually we're going to play a show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. I swear we're a band. Yeah. I swear. <laughs> but th that first show was a lot of fun, and a lot of pressure after that was gone, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if anybody else feels this, but I'm only nervous after it performed. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, then I got to sit there and talk to people and, and hear what they thought. Oh yeah, you know that. That's for me. I always, I, I would always get off stage, and then I'd be like, "All right, they gotta go schmooze," but this, I'd rather just go away. <laughs> you know, um, that of course, the first chord or the first lyric is always like, "Get this right," and everything else just kicks in. Yeah. <laughs> so I certainly have my my share of wrong chords <laughs> and wrong, and you know, just keep going. Nothing. Just keep nothing. going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You mess up, you can recover. It's, it's not, you know, it's how you recover when you mess up, not how you mess up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, that's I, happened before. One of the last shows I, I performed, actually, um, was somehow, I don't know how, but my pedal board got disconnected. Don't know how. It tested fine, sound checked fine. And then, just suddenly, just go to start. And I'm, oh. <laughs> Nothing. And, and it starts with, I'm singing and playing chords at the same time. 
So suddenly I'm just singing. Oh. <laughs> eh, it's alright. It is what it is. Um, that happens. And the sound person was mad at me. Oh. <laughs> like I did. <laughs> um, Alright, so from favorite show memories, I want to talk favorite uh, Vegas venues for live music, whether you played there or not. Don't say the Huntridge, anybody, gee. <laughs> Huntridge Tavern or the Huntridge Theater? <laughs> Huntridge Theater. Yeah, like, well, wait, is anybody here old enough to remember playing there? I never, I played, never, been, I never played it. Jason played Jason, there. I never got to go. I, I was going to go, and I didn't know it had been shut down. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, that's a bar. I was there like every weekend from like 13, 14 years old to wow. like 19 or so. Right on. Well, so maybe you could say it. Yeah, <laughs> if you want to. You got you, you got that. <laughs> yeah, I always want to play the hundred. But hundreds. is that when you, yeah, I, I, I have no, no, like, I have no benchmark for it. I have no idea how it sounded or anything. I, I was a kid. Everything was amazing. Yeah, right. What, you know? Were you not supposed to be there? Uh, no, it was all ages most of the time. Really? Yeah, where my mom knew the door guy. Oh, there you yeah. go. Wayne, he's a, he's a real nice guy. Nice. Yeah. Anybody else? I love, Space? The, I love the House of Blues. Yes. The House of Blues. I love that place. I mean, you got a sound person there and a sound person here. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, for me, a first where I, I can hear everything. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The old, the old joint was pretty cool. Too. Yeah. Uh, again, never got a chance to go. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised it, it shut down even with COVID. Uh, I guess. Yeah, I played a lot of different shows that are not around anymore. Like the emergency room, Boston. I remember the emergency room. Uh, mm -hmm. The old Boston. The old like Boston the and room. new Boston. Yeah. Cheyenne Saloon. Yeah. Probably, yeah. probably Cheyenne the one place I missed the most is Cheyenne Saloon. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, the country Rick tried with adrenaline. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rick really gave it a go with adrenaline, and, and there were some improvements. The stage, for one thing. Yeah. I, I, I've played where it, you it bounced. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you're like, am I going through? To, is this the night? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was cool with the monitor. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, the bar. Bar. Yeah. Yes, well, that was adrenaline, was it? Did, adrenaline, did, yeah. did, I was going to say, Cheyenne didn't have monitor no. on the floor. Um, I give out uh, a shout out to uh, Eagle Hall, you know, they do some pretty yeah. all ages shows out there. I just want to, I need to go. There's yeah. so many, there's still so many venues, even after COVID, that, you know, the ones that are still open. I just, every time I, I think, I'm going to go. Take a look at my to-do list. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I can't yet because I have promises to keep. And that's the thing. So, uh, speaking of which, stick around. We're going to be seeing the uh, music video from them. Do we know what song it's going to be for? Uh, it'll either be for Undone or Apocalyptic Solace. Ooh, I like Apocalyptic Solace. Yeah. That's the name. Uh, uh, so, stick around for that. Definitely in the comments, hit a, uh, you know, drop a, a comment. What's your favorite Mastiff song and uh, music video? And uh, maybe we'll get one from them in the future. But... I wanted to also ask, have, oh yeah, I have a thought, where'd I go, come here, oh yes, that's right, any big, any, anything coming up, what's coming up for Mastiff? Uh, we got our show on the 27th of August, which is our CD release and Josh's birthday bash, Yay. Right on. so make sure you get tickets because they're going. Party. Yeah, this, this should post before then. The yeah. old man club. Yeah. The old man club. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so definitely, at, uh, where's that again? It is at the space. At the spas. That's right. I mentioned it in the intro. Yep. <laughs> I almost said it myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, Beautiful venue. Uh, great, great sound. Great stage. Great people at, at the space. Yeah, we love them. Good. Yeah, good I, sound well, man. Nice, backstage, everything. Like they, they, they're great people. We love them. Cool. Any, uh, any new uh, studio stuff coming out? Um, yeah, we got our CD release at the same time. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So. Jeez. Yep. Room six whiskey. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> right on. Last question. You made it. Yay. Yay. Let's pretend we're talking to little you. We're talking to new musicians, basically. What is something that you wish somebody had told you you might want to know before getting into music? And don't say change your strings. <laughs> Guitar solo said change your strings. Yeah. Work hard. Work hard. Because, uh, you know, when you get, when you get in to music, you think, a lot of people think, okay, I started a band, everybody's going to love me, and you, and you <laughs> play your first show, and there's three people there, Boo! you know, and so it's just like, work hard, uh, practice hard, work hard, uh, if you work hard, you can, can make it, mm -hmm. you know, we're not quite where we want to be yet, but we're still working hard, and we're, we'll get there, yeah, and, and always have a plan B, as, as in not music, yeah, make sure you can, yeah, support, you know. The music. You gotta, you gotta eat. You gotta drink. Yeah. You, you gotta take care of things. So. Yeah. What you, what, what you, where you work is not who you are. What you do is not who you are. It's just what allows you to chase who you really are. And if you 
if you keep that in mind, if you remember that, it makes it a lot easier to, to grind on what you want while dealing with the public and <laughs> dealing with, you know, what you have to do. And we all, you know, it's very, very rare that a musician at, at, that isn't famous can just not have to work a, a, day, a day job. It's very rare. And the ones that aren't, the ones that get to just do music for a living, are working a lot. They're doing music a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Next. Um, I'd say just basically what Steve said, work hard, you know, you're going to run into a lot of roadblocks and stuff, but if you push through it, just push through it, and you'll get there. Cool. Lots of practice. Stick to it, yes. Yeah. I'd say stick with it, be open minded. Sure. And, uh, you know, focus on the strengths, not worry about what some other guy can do, you know? I agree. I agree. Um, Make lots of friends. Ne yeah. Networking. Yeah. Friends are going to help you. It, 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 even if you have, like, when you can get issues. One. I know. I mean, you know right? <laughs> even if you have issues with, you know, talking to strangers or whatever, don't be afraid to talk about, talk about your act. Talk to other musicians. Even if it's just know him, because you never know how years later. Well, that that's how I'm in my current job is because I network with people from mm -hmm. 20 years ago, and it's or when I connect the dots, it's like, well, I talked to this person who put me in touch with this person, who if I hadn't met this person, I wouldn't have met this person. Six and degrees, it's just kind yeah. of interesting how how it works. Yep. You know, when you look back, but yeah, that's that's exactly it. Is when you talk to people, and, and you and you got to be genuine with people. You know, you can't just sit there and talk about yourself. I mean, you you, you have to. But be genuinely interested and see what they have to say, and yep. and uh, you know be positive. Couldn't say it any better. Time. Thanks for watching. Thank you for being on the channel. Appreciate you all. Thank you. Um, stick around. Like I said, we're going to see a music video from Mastiff. All the social media for them will be down in the description, as well as a social media link for Rim Six, where you can pick up merch if you want to support the channel and the local scene. You can also uh, go to maybe become a patron on Patreon. As little as a dollar a month. We've got patron only content there as well as some other cool perks, and I've got a couple CDs of my own now. Um, other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up there, and if you want to subscribe, I'd really appreciate you. It really does make a difference. Please click down there, and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing in whatever you do. If you can't make it better, don't make it worse. We'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Bye. Bye.